And what I reflected upon is that when we did devote our lives, we devoted all of our lives, including our children, <laughs> because my kids had to stay, I had three kids at home, and Martin would take care of them until I got back home at the end of the day. Or I had a sitter like once or twice a week. But he was a dentist and he had a profession, but by golly, I was in there too. And so we worked out how we were gonna, how we were gonna do that. And Joe used to depend upon Martin to go with him on trips because Martin looked like a businessman and he was in what you'd call a profession. So he could start uh, opening up a conversation when Joe would meet heads of state and people that were maybe in businesses and so on, he could pass Martin off first and then move in on whatever he had in mind. And they liked each other and got along together. And Where so, are some places they went? Oh, they went, well, he went all over the world with Joe two or three times. Is it? Yeah. And he, then he took our kids on, on trips. He took uh, George to Africa. He thought George ought to be aware of what was going on. And he took Chris to South America. And uh, Kay was getting just old enough that we decided we would have her go to school in New York with Fred and Sarah Buss and the priors of the house. And Kay went to an experimental school for smart kids. Kay was always very bright. And so she went to this school in, in New York and helped take care of the bus children when she'd get home in the afternoons. And, uh, so she knew, knew them very well. She always had memories after memories of doing, doing her work in New York. She got acquainted with uh, the Alvin Ailey Dance School. She was taking dance lessons because she liked to dance. And then she finally got into the Alvin Ailey Company and was dancing. And uh, after two or three years of it, she said, I discovered, she came back for a summer session and decided she'd go with me down to the Institute during her summer holiday. And she said, I decided there was nothing more than just dancing. You just had to watch your body and just dance and dance and dance. And that wasn't enough for me, for life. So she hung around there and finally fell in love with Jeff Nixon. And <laughs> their marriage came out of this. Because Jeff had been in Indonesia going to school. And uh, so they finally ended up <clears throat> being married. There, in fact, um, it was, who was it that talked us, I don't remember who it was, talked us into having their marriage at the end of our summer session when we always had a big hoop do the last day of the summer. They, they said, let's have a wedding as the big occasion and then you can pay for the food, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do all the other. So we, uh, decided we would have that wedding the last day of the summer session so everybody could be there. And I can remember we hired a catering company, you know it, they were downtown Chicago. And uh, we hired the catering company to bring, and it was gonna be like 11 o'clock or one o'clock, so it was a light lunch that we were having. Little sandwiches and fruit and all that kind of, <clears throat> and they would start out a whole troop of those, about eight of those people, would start out with trays at one end of the, on second floor, do you remember? It was a long mm -hmm. hallway before mm -hmm. you get into the great hall. They would go along this hallway and there were people on both sides of the people would be taking their food off. These. By the time they got to, there wasn't anything left <laughs> on their trays of food for this wedding. But anyway, we had a wonderful time during, during that time.